had a feeling this was going to get a little ugly, a little awkward, a little dicey for NFL Network. And let me just start here, because I think a lot of people don't understand that NFL Network is owned by the National Football League. They don't license the name. Sirius XM NFL Radio has been around for 18 years, 20 years. They license that to Sirius. The NFL doesn't own the channel. The NFL doesn't operate the channel. They just give the NFL name for a fee to Sirius so they can have an exclusive official NFL radio station. Now, I assume that if anyone on Sirius XM NFL radio says something the NFL really doesn't like, Sirius hears about it. I digress just a little bit, just just, just a little bit. NFL Network and NFL.com owned and operated by the National Football League. The NFL isn't some separate entity from the teams. That's the other misconception. You got the 32 teams and you got the NFL. The NFL is the 32 teams. The 32 teams own the NFL. The 32 owners, well, 31 plus the Packers shareholders who don't really own anything, own the NFL. So NFL Network, ipso facto, is owned by the owners. So when you have something happen at NFL Network that reflects poorly on one of the owners, one of the owners partially owns equally with the other teams, the other owners, NFL Network. And that's why you rarely have an NFL Network controversy. And that's one of my big criticisms, frankly, of this entire concept of leagues and teams owning their own media. You're working for the entity you ultimately cover. There are certain things you can't say, certain things you won't say. There have been former NFL Network employees who have acknowledged that after they leave NFL Network. There's an inherent conflict of interest. I've got zero journalistic education. All my training is on the job, and most of it is trial and error with more error than trial. But one thing I have learned, it's not a good idea to take a paycheck from the entity you cover. And I get a lot of blowback when I point that out because the people who work for NFL Network, they're caught in that in that reality. And they don't like it when people point it out. They've suspended disbelief like you do when you go to a movie, right? They've accepted this is how it is and they just don't pay attention to it. And they don't want anybody else mentioning it. That's one of the areas of criticism I get when I bring it up. And the other area is from people who are also in this industry who like the fact that there are other jobs out there that either they can pursue or others that they would be competing with for other jobs already have. Like, it's good to have more jobs in this space. Why are you saying these things? And over the years, I have had that conversation with people. Why are you bringing this up? These are jobs that are available to people who do what we do. Okay, fine. You're still working for the entity you cover. So that's my preamble as to why this whole thing caught me as interesting from the moment that I first caught wind of it. Colleen Wolf, who seems like a very nice person, very competent host, successful at NFL Network, was on the Around the NFL podcast. Our old pal Greg Rosenthal, part of that podcast, although he wasn't on the episode that generated the clip that created the issue this week. She deviated into something she had heard from a very reliable source at the league meetings in Orlando that there was a very heated conversation between Jets owner Woody Johnson and Jets coach Robert Sala. And when I saw that clip, like at first I clicked on it because I thought, well, this is different to have someone from NFL Network saying anything that would fall into the category of rumor mongering, especially as it relates to an owner of a team, because again, that owner owns in equal measure NFL Network. Third rail. Don't do it. Don't even get close to it. You got plenty of stuff you can talk about to fill your time. Don't say anything about the people who own 
this place. And it's easier for me, like, what am I going to say about Comcast? I, other than to, like, have a little fun from time to time, but we don't even do that. I stay away from that. I don't cover Comcast. See, that's the difference. People are like, oh, we all have our issues. We all have our things that we can and can't say. I wasn't hired to cover Comcast and NBC. I'm not on the NBC beat working for NBC. That's where it becomes problematic. Anyway, she starts down this path of very heated conversation between Robert Sala and Woody Johnson. And it was presented in kind of a funny, snarky, gossipy way, game showy. And I, as I was watching, I'm thinking, this isn't going to go well. They're going to go through some things here at NFL Network because the Jets aren't going to appreciate this. So as I learned the hard way on Wednesday night when I posted an item at PFT that was mainly a story about the fact that the folks at NFL Network who usually understand there are guardrails that are fairly tight that they need to confine their content to, that we had somebody deviate from that, that's the story. And yes, secondary to that, the claim that there was a very heated conversation between Woody Johnson and Robert Sala. And there's pressure there. There's tension there. From the outside, is that a shock that there'd be any sort of potential dysfunction? First of all, under Woody Johnson's stewardship, the Jets have been traditionally one of the most dysfunctional teams in the NFL. If I was a top draft pick, if the Jets had one of the top three picks this year and they were eyeballing me as a quarterback, I would say, no, thank you. Not interested. Not playing for you. No way. No how. Now, see, I can say that because Woody Johnson, as far as I know, doesn't own one thirty second of Comcast through his acquisition of stock over the year, but I could be wrong. Regardless, I don't have that same carburetor plate, restrictor plate. Is that what they call it? Restrictor plate. I should know that. We have NASCAR. Restrictor plate. I don't have that on me. When you work for NFL Network, it's just implied, or at least it should be. So I know the Jets weren't happy because I heard from the Jets based upon my story. And it's like, I didn't say it. To me, I'm, what, I'm supposed to ignore it? You've got somebody at NFL Network who is saying the thing that no one from NFL Network has ever said in 20 plus years of its existence and I'm supposed to ignore it? Well, it's not true. I don't care if it's not true. I mean, I'm not saying it is true. I'm saying they said it. And it's the fact that they said it that became noteworthy. Now, I do care fundamentally as to whether or not any facts that are alleged at PFT are true. And that became the other tributary of this river. The idea that you had some folks in the media who cover the Jets who have not the same conflict, but similar. It's a similar conflict of interest. Anybody that covers a team, there's a symbiosis there. You need access. You need them to cooperate with you. There are certain things you'll hold your nose and push as a favor to the team. And I'm sorry, this, I'm not trying to pick on Connor Hughes of SNY. This is the reality of being a beat writer. I've learned that over the years from getting to know people who cover these teams. It's part of the gig, just like working for NFL Network. Hey, part of the gig. We got to watch what we say about owners and the league office. If you're covering a team, there's a certain give and take there. So Connor Hughes on Wednesday night after this all hits the fan, claims that he was at the Monday night party that they had, the reception, didn't see anything amiss. Well, he didn't listen to the whole clip, or the Jets hadn't listened to the whole clip, because initially, Colleen Wolf says Monday night, then she amends it later in the segment to it was Sunday night, not Monday night. So, yeah, there was nothing to see Monday night. The show happened on Sunday night if it happened. So... As of yesterday morning, I knew the Jets were upset. And I don't think I'm saying anything I'm not authorized to say. I'm not citing any sources. I know as of yesterday morning, they weren't happy. And I know that I was having to say, I didn't report it. Well, it's not true. I didn't report it. The story is it was NFL Network that said something. And the fact that the Jets insist it didn't happen makes it even more significant. It's one thing 
for someone from NFL Network to say something that is accurate that goes against the interests of those who own and operate NFL Network. It's another thing if they're out there saying things that aren't true. And that's the indication that we got. Because I was waiting for a statement. I said to the Jets, hey, you want to go on the record? I don't like to traffic in off-the-record background stuff when it's self-serving to the person who's telling me. You got something to tell me that supports your position on this matter. I need it to be on the record. I need you to say this is false. I need you to say this is not accurate. And if you're so inclined, I need you to say this is irresponsible reporting. Of course, I never would have expected a statement from the Jets to say that. But here we are. The post on X from Woody Johnson that landed out of the blue yesterday afternoon. (laughs) Calling out the media outlet he owns, along with his other NFL ownership partners. All this nonsense about a heated argument between Coach Sala and me at the league meetings is absolutely false. It is yet another irresponsible report from NFL Network. Please disregard what the, it's like an old Western Union telegram. Please disregard. Stop. Another irresponsible network report. Stop. Absolutely false. Stop. Carry on. Stop. Over. Over. So anyway, um, put that back up. I, 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 I uh, it is yet another irresponsible report from NFL Network. NFL Network has no history of irresponsible reporting because NFL Network has no history of controversial reporting. The people who work for NFL Network know that if they deviate from the very tight lines within which they must remain, they're going to be in trouble. This is the first time I, I asked the PFT writers collectively via text yesterday, is there another time there's been an irresponsible or any controversial NFL Network report that you can remember? I asked people who work for NFL Network that I know. Was there ever another controversy that you're aware of? I'm not aware of any. If any of you out there who are listening or watching this morning are aware of any past irresponsible reporting from NFL Network, please feel free to tweet it at me or post it at me, I guess. I'm trying to be, you know, technically accurate with the name of the hellscape where we now reside. That's a different issue altogether. I might have time for it today since I got to fill two hours. Topic, segment five, the hellscape that Twitter has become over the past year. Probably not. So anyway, that was what Woody Johnson had to say on the matter. And again, I'm still trying to figure out what other irresponsible reporting NFL Network has done. But see, this is what happens in this day and age. And this isn't, just confined to Woody Johnson. This is the new playbook that loosely emerged, oh, I don't know, in June of 2015. When anything that anyone says in the media you don't like, instead of meeting it on the merits, you just say it's all lies. It's fake news. It's made up. It's another irresponsible report from a media outlet that has no history of irresponsible reporting because they can't. They're going to get in trouble if they do. So please disregard Woody Johnson telling you to please disregard. If anything, the way the Jets, and I I know I'm going to go through some stuff this morning, not the stuff that Shereen Williams is going through, uh, different topic again, but uh, I, I, the way the Jets have handled this, frankly, Makes me think it's true. I'm not, I don't know. Please, I don't, I don't know. But this hasn't been a very convincing reaction. The way they've scrambled the Jets, no pun intended, to deal with this, although not a bad one if I had intended. You know, if I did intend it, it's not a bad one. It's not a, a full blown dad joke groaner, but it's close. But the way they've handled it makes me think, thou doth protest too much and in a very awkward, clumsy way. Now, that set the stage for the inevitable retraction 
from Colleen Wolf. The full apology, along with a retraction of anything remotely suggesting that there was a heated conversation between Woody Johnson and Robert Sala. Well, we eventually got an apology, but in her apology, there is no retraction. I don't know if we have the graphic, but, and if we don't, if somebody could copy and paste the text of it from the PFT item and put it in the document, I'll, I'll read it. It merits careful consideration. There's an apology for creating an unnecessary distraction. First of all, I don't know of any necessary distractions. It's a little, it's a little redundant. But, but hey, I, I got no problem with somebody who's engaging in a cleanup on aisle five. Here's the full post from Colleen Wolf, which she was wise. Whether she was told to do it, decided to do it, she was wise to do it because the guy who partially owns the operation isn't all that happy right now. Regarding my comments surrounding the Jets on the Around the NFL podcast, no, I was not at the annual meeting. And yes, I was told of the exchange between head coach Robert Sala and Woody Johnson by someone in attendance. Others on site Sunday night have since reached out and described the interaction differently. My intent wasn't to break news. I leave that to the insiders. My sincerest apologies to the Jets organization for the unnecessary distraction during such a critical part of of the offseason, crucial part of the offseason. Sorry, I misread the word. Same idea. I could have just passed over it and acted like I got it right, but I'm committed to accuracy here. Crucial part of the offseason. Okay, now, there's nothing in there that constitutes a retraction. There's nothing in there that could be regarded as Colleen Wolf saying, I was wrong. She said, first words out of her mouth in the clip, very reliable source. She doesn't say in that post that her source is unreliable. She just said she has since been told by others in attendance. How is this worded? Described the interaction differently. Described it differently. So you know how this goes. It happens all the time. You got multiple people that see the same thing. You get multiple stories. She's not saying that the story that made it onto the air at the Around the NFL podcast was false. She's just saying she's heard from others who described it differently. And I have a feeling based upon some of the things I've heard, some of the people I've heard from over the past couple of days, she was told by people with the Jets who have a clear bias in putting out this fire that it didn't happen. She has not thrown her source under the bus. She has not outed her source. She has not retracted anything. She's just shared the perspective that she's heard from others who viewed the interaction differently because if those people are from the New York Jets, they have a clear incentive to do so. Again, it feeds my suspicion that maybe there is something to it. And the fact that NFL Network owned and operated by all owners, including Woody Johnson, did not make a full retraction, an about face, a Boston Herald. Remember Spygate 2, the controversy over whether or not the former Patriots employee had videotaped the Rams final walkthrough practice before Super Bowl 36. That landed just before Super Bowl 42. When the Patriots were trying to go 19-0 and that Friday, this thing landed out of nowhere. The Boston Herald reported it. They eventually, eventually, did a full page. Basically, we screwed up. They retracted the whole thing. It's all wrong. That didn't happen here. Hasn't been retracted and probably won't be retracted because I have a feeling, and I don't know this, and I know people get uncomfortable when we speculate on who people's sources are, but I don't think it's a stretch to th believe that somebody who works at NFL Network, who has colleagues and friends at NFL Network, would have a very reliable source who works for NFL Network or the NFL who saw the interaction, shared it with her, and then when it all hits the fan, and look, it's very easy. Whoever was tasked with cleaning this mess up in management and NFL Network, 
Who did you talk to? Who told you this? We're not going to say this on the air, Colleen, but you need to tell us who told you. Because we need to ask this person. whether We need to find out whether or not this is true. And so she gives the name. Why wouldn't you at that point? You're in trouble. And you're not saying it publicly. This is all an internal matter. So you give the name. They get that person on the phone. What did you see? And that person says what they saw. And they go, well, it sounds like a very heated conversation to me. We're probably not going to retract this. So anyway, what a shock. The Jets might not be the most tightly run ship in the NFL. Who would have dreamed of all the teams in the NFL that the New York Jets, under the stewardship of Woody Johnson, I'm not casting blame directly at anybody who works for him. This is one of the realities that every fan of every team has to deal with. You are stuck with your owner until he sells the team or dies. I'm sorry, I don't know that. I don't want that to sound crass, but it's true. You are stuck. The Commanders fans were stuck with Daniel Snyder until he sold the team or died. And then you're stuck with whoever ends up with it next. This is what I love slash hate about this entire business model. Multi-billion dollar businesses that are run like family-owned food trucks. Mom and pop stores. And if you have enough money, you can buy one. Do you know anything about football? Doesn't matter. Are you going to be a good steward for the franchise? Doesn't matter. Are you going to keep the team where it currently is? Doesn't matter. I got the big bag of cash, and I got the biggest bag of cash, and there aren't many people around who even have big enough bags of cash to even make an offer. I'm going to buy the team, and I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. That's how it goes. You can't fire the owner, as Jed York once said. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.